now we'll go with the next equation so what is saying chromate coating on the zinc chromate coating on the zinc is an example of okay chromate coating on the zinc is an example of what right so see here chromate coating i told you so this is not waiting it is coating okay so chromate coating so chromate coating on a zinc so if you see in this way we have okay so zinc we are considering this is zinc right and uh, above we are applying some zinc chromate okay zncro2 in this way we are having some chromate coatings right so what in under what classification i told you guys there is no need of explanation for this question it is already given in the classifications right it is already given in the classifications right so what did i tell you it is it is the organic coating did i tell you or not it comes under the organic coating right so under metallic coating what we are doing we are applying another metal in the metallic coating we are applying directly another metal right and in the organic coating we are having the chrome it's like chromium we are mixing it mixing it with the which the metal required and we are making it as a coating on the top right so that is what and on the under the non metallic coating what we have it is completely different it is completely different and uh, under this anodized coating we are going some uh, like electrolysis process right we are undergoing some electrolysis process so there it comes so what is that the chromate coating on a zinc is an example of what organic coating okay right so that is what now the buried pipes okay this is not h this is b okay so the buried pipes the buried iron pipes used for the transportation the buried iron pipes used for the transportation of oil are protected from corrosion by how they are protected the buried pipes very very clearly i told you right the underground pipes which we are having the underground pipes which we are having in this way these pipes are protected these pipes are protected by what okay so very very clearly i told you if this is an if this is a metal if this is a metal which is very big metal that is an uh, like it is an pipe na so which is very big metal so this big metal is connected underground underground it is connected to the more oxidation potential element right this is connected to more more oxidation potential okay right it is connected to what it is connected to more oxidation potential element this is a metal which is having more oxidation potential right now this is a metal we have this metal is connected to the another metal another metal which is having very high oxidation potential so when it is connected to more oxidation potential element when it is connected to more oxidation potential element then this more oxidation potential element will uh, act as what it will it will act as anode right because because it is having very high oxidation potential because it is having very high oxidation potential so it is connected to more oxidation potential right now this is acting as anode so when it acts as anode then automatically it acts as what this buried pipe it will act as cathode it will act as cathode so already we know very clearly when anode and cathode we have definitely which one will undergo corrosion which one will undergo corrosion definitely right only anode will undergo corrosion only anode will undergo corrosion this is very clear right only anode will undergo corrosion and cathode will protect it so this is a buried pipe and it is acting as cathode so damn sure it is protected it is protected isn't it now this is protected and this is corroded which one this more active metal is corroded because it is more oxidation potential more oxidation potential means it is more active so active it is acts as anode then it will undergo corrosion okay is that right so this is a question he is saying so how these are protected and this complete method is called what this complete method is called as 
sacrificial anode method i told you already right sacrificial it is called as sacrificial anode method it is called as sacrificial anode method so this is a sacrificial because anode here it is sacrificing itself it is itself sacrificing okay so that is what okay so what it is the first option we have is sacrificial anode this is wrong and this is also wrong this is also wrong okay right so that is what now so next question what is saying which metal easily undergoes corrosion tell me yourself guys if you have watched the videos definitely you could answer this which metal easily undergoes corrosion gold will not under uh, gold definitely it will not undergo corrosion we already know silver silver it will also not undergo because we are having some stable methods we are having some stable methods so it will also not undergo corrosion sodium sodium right what sodium will it undergo corrosion so most of the people will be doing wrong here guys okay so what they do is they will they are actually more uh, like they are more natured with the iron metals right because basically we will be seeing all the metals around us basically more we have the iron and we don't know how is sodium for the most of the people isn't it right so they will choose the answer as iron without seeing the sodium without seeing the sodium they will choose the answer as iron but the thing here is but the thing here is iron is less active than sodium iron is less active than sodium what we know we know basically more active will undergo corrosion more active will undergo fast corrosion fast corrosion more active ones right and less active okay less active will undergo very less speed less corrosion okay less corrosion so among iron and sodium tell me which is more active which is more active definitely sodium is more active and iron is less so iron will undergo corrosion but very very slowly than compared to sodium sodium will undergo very speed corrosion and very fast okay so in this way we have lithium potassium sodium magnesium calcium and ferrous and zinc in this way we have okay in this way we have so what is saying Pot sodium is very top ferrous is very bottom that means which is more active which is more active definitely sodium is more active and this ferrous is less active so what is saying easily undergoing means the more active ones will easily undergo corrosion which is more active means sodium is more active right sodium is more active so this will undergo fast and fast corrosion than compared to the iron than compared to the iron okay is that clear so that is what and what we have the next one composition of rust is composition of rust right so what is the composition of rust very very clearly i told you it is fe2o3 xh2o right rust we know na iron rust what is the formula for iron rust very very important question very very important what is the formula for iron rust we know for iron rust for iron rust what we have we have fe2o3 fe2o3 xh2o fe2o3 xh2o right so this is the formula for iron to get rusted fe2o3 xh2o it is a formula for iron rust i told you very very clearly right so this is ferrous of a hydroxide feoh taken feoh taken thrice is not right but what is the formula for iron rust it is fe2o3 xh2o which is very very important question please do remember i told you very very clearly iron rust means what fe2o3 xh2o iron rust means only one thing that is fe2o3 xh2o formula okay so that is what so these are the questions we have and we'll see the next question until then what take the complete note of this okay so let us see the next question also okay so take it down guys completely i hope you are clear with this okay right okay so the next question we are having here is what electroplating obeys which law 
electroplating the method you know already right we have seen electroplating it obeys which laws so we know electroplating we have what two laws which are taken two laws which are taken from the electroplating so what do we have in this way we have and if you like if you have anode and cathode here between here we are having the voltage right and here we have the like solution which are replaced completely with the ions so which laws are they going to obey which laws they are going to obey so ohms law ohms law it is not related to this concept right so ohms law is not arrhenius theory you get confused here okay oswald's law we don't have we don't hear the name also so we have the two laws what are the two laws that are faraday's first law faraday's first law and faraday's okay faraday's second law what do we have we have faraday's first law and faraday's second law so these two laws these two laws are taken from the electroplating process right these two laws are taken from the electroplating process that means what is the faraday first law states the weight of the metal which is deposited at this cathode at this cathode is directly proportional to the quantity of electricity passed that is w is directly proportional to q this is first law the metal which is deposited at the the metal weight the weight of a substance or the metal the weight of a metal which is deposited at this cathode is directly proportional to the current which is passed right then what it is called basically it is called as it is called as the faraday's first law from this only we got and what is the faraday's second law states the the weight of a metal deposited here same weight of a metal deposited here is directly proportional to the is directly proportional to what the equivalent weight of the solution the element of the solution which we have if we are having ferrous sulfate then weight is directly proportional to equivalent weight of ferrous if we have if we are having zinc sulfate then weight of a metal which is directly proportional to the zinc equivalent weight okay so if we are if you are having the uh, like silver chloride then the weight of a metal which is deposited here is directly proportional to the equivalent weight of silver that means the weight of a metal deposited at the cathode is directly proportional to the directly proportional to the equivalent weight of the element in the solution element in the solution whatever it might be it might be like ferrous sulfate zinc sulfate okay agso4 any what anything okay it is directly proportional to the equivalent weights of these elements these elements okay right so that is what we have here okay now so what it is this is obeying the faraday's laws it obeys the faraday's laws right now during stress corrosion stress corrosion we have seen very clearly stress corrosion of an iron nail of an iron nail okay so he is talking about the iron nail okay this is an iron nail so during the stress corrosion of an iron nail the anodic area the anodic area is which is the anodic area so first of all in the stress corrosion what we have seen the the place where the place where the metal the place where the metal exhibits more stress the place where the metal exhibits more stress it is called as anode right and the place where metal and the place where metal exhibits very less stress less amount of stress okay the place where metal exhibits more stress is uh, is is undergoing corrosion okay and the place where it, the metal undergoes very less stress is called as cathode so it does not undergo corrosion right now what he is saying is now what he is saying is in an iron nail in an iron nail okay in an iron nail in this way we have right in an iron nail the place which is undergoing okay what is saying the anodic area is so which one exhibits more stress guys here which one will exhibit more stress so see if you are having a iron nail then you are you are what you are doing you are like you are hitting it into the wall you are hitting it into the wall right so how do we have wall 
how do we have wall in this way we are having the wall right now what i am doing i am hitting the iron nail into this i am hitting the iron nail into this okay then when you are hitting the iron nail then which one will exhibit stress tell me common like think uh, logically so if you see i am hitting from the front so front it is having stress and it is getting hitted into the wall into the wall will it go easily it does not go easily because wall is very hard right so if you hit it what happens it observe this stress it observe this stress that means in the iron nail in the iron nail this corner and this corner both are observing stress both are observing stress that means because in front we are hitting in back it is observing it is like it is also uh, having the stress because it is getting hitted into wall into the wall it doesn't go such much, such easily right so what happens into the wall it observes very hard stress also right so if this is iron nail i am hitting from here it is going into the wall that means here also there is stress here also there is stress we are having both the stresses that means which is anodic area definitely both are anodic areas okay so both are anodic areas head of the nail of course head of the nail is also anodic area but we are having the this head tail also no so pointed end pointed end is also not one alone it is not both are observing stress so head and pointed nail so both are observing the stress so definitely both will undergo corrosion so definitely this is an answer this is an answer okay so none is not okay so this is what very important okay during stress corrosion which one will undergo corrosion means both the ends will definitely undergo corrosion okay right now rusting of iron is due to rusting of iron the very first question we have discussed that to rust what are necessary i told you to iron to get rusted okay for rust what is necessary i told you definitely moisture is important definitely moisture is important along with moisture what is important along with moisture oxygen is also important right moisture is important and along with moisture we, what is important oxygen is also necessary so impurities oxygen no impurities moisture no oxygen yes moisture is also yes so both are necessary right i told you now water is necessary that is moisture due to moisture and air is also present in the oxygen that is in air we have oxygen so due to that oxygen what is happening anodic area gets formed due to that what happens anodic area gets formed so due to anodic area definitely the moisture is present then anodic area will form due to that anodic area it undergoes corrosion okay so what did i tell you for corrosion for corrosion or rust or rust definitely what is important water or we can say h2o is nothing but moisture okay h2o is nothing but moisture so h2o is important and oxygen is also important these both are definitely necessary remember very very clearly for rusting of an iron or corrosion we require both water that is moisture and oxygen okay so impurities and moisture is an answer right so take it down impurities oxygen moisture of course this can also be answered but most priority is given for an oxygen and moisture is due to means definitely oxygen and moisture these both are pakka these are necessary okay so take it down as i hope you are clear with this right so we'll go with the next questions okay so take it down